So welcome back to another episode of FIFA History. Today we are taking a look at FIFA 19 once again in 2022. This game came out in 2018, of course, so it's almost been four years, and the time has flown, to be honest, but it's almost been four years. Some people might have nightmares from FIFA 19 still. Some people probably liked it, but I think a lot of people didn't like it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to take a look, see what it's about, and what kind of features it had. If you do enjoy the video, please leave a like for me, it always helps, and make sure you subscribe for more FIFA history videos. I just love how EA's trying to sell you FIFA 22 while you're on FIFA 19. I mean, I know it's just coming out for PlayStation Plus, so it's technically free, but they want you on the newer games, man. They don't want you on those old games because uh, they're not making any money out of you. Look at that. The whole right-hand side is just about FIFA 22. But anyway, here is the menus for FIFA 19. Looks the same as like FIFA 17 and FIFA 18 and stuff. Um, I think that blue still gives me nightmares. The blue background always gives me nightmares, that color. But as you can see, you've got your skill games, your practice arena, all that kind of stuff there. The Champions League, which was a new license at the time. This was the year that they brought in the Champions League license. And of course, they made a big deal out of that one. And uh, the rest of it seems pretty familiar. Let's take a look at the EA catalog. Remember that one? You know, you had your boots and stuff. You still get your boots these days, but just in a different way. And I think you had kits and all that. There was also Ultimate Team, online career mode perks as well. So all that kind of stuff there. Remember the EA catalog, man. One of those uh, cool features that I always used to just shop around in. Next up, let's take a look at the practice arena. I don't even want to look at it, to be honest, but I feel like it's tradition to always take a look at the practice arenas and just see the steady decline over the years. I mean, look at this, man. No stadium. You're just in a training ground. It's probably Ronaldo's backyard, to be honest. This is probably just Ronaldo's backyard in his house somewhere. So, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. But as you can see, no features. All you can do is select sides and exit. There's nothing else to do besides, uh, you know, practice free kicks and all that by pressing the up button. But the rest of it is pretty bad, man. There's nothing to do. What do you even do on this, man? Who plays more than two minutes of this practice arena anymore? All right, let's go over to career mode here. Let's see what we've got to work with. Now, I remember at the time there was a lot of complaints about career mode because people wanted new features and we didn't really get any game-changing features. Of course, this was the last game to have the Aventus license as well, so we do miss that these days, but of course, this was another year of these avatars. Remember these avatars? Man, everyone had enough of these by FIFA 19. They wanted to create their own managers. Yeah, I mean, this was pretty bad, man. No one wanted this by FIFA 19. Everyone was complaining. You've got your European competitions, which was new at the time, like I said. You had your Champions League and Europa League, which is a nice license to have in the game. You've got to have these licenses. Now, this was also the career mode to have only four save slots. Do you remember this? Four save slots for career mode people. Completely ridiculous. I don't even know what the excuse was at the time. And, uh, you know, I only had four saves, and this is when I was doing my, like, videos. These are all, like, experiment videos and stuff. But four save slots, mate. Even eight is not enough for me. I need, like, 30 or something. You know how many profiles I've created just to have more save slots in career mode? It's ridiculous. But four save slots. You can see the menus in that was pretty much the same. Uh, a lot of people were calling for change by now. I mean, they want to change in career mode. You had your board expectations, the jobs, the career, the emails, the finances... And uh, I think Request Funds wasn't in this game as well. But it did have a few new features. I'll run through them now because a lot of people forget that FIFA 19 did introduce some cool things into career mode as well. So the first major thing was the Champions League, of course. That was the major feature coming to career mode and they hyped it up to the max. You could also play Europa League and basically you would have those cinematics where the guy holds up the draw cards and all that kind of stuff there. They also introduced Ultimate Difficulty in FIFA 19. So if you use that difficulty these days, it first came out in FIFA 19. Player training was also upgraded a little bit to allow you to train a player's strength and sprint speed. Pre-game cutscenes were also introduced. You'll see players getting off the bus at the beginning of a game. And you also saw the cutscenes of them like warming up before the game and stuff. Release clauses. When you were searching for new players to sign, you could now tick a box to only see players with a release clause in the contract. And also, this was another nice detail. They upgraded the badges when you got promoted, and they like changed the badges when you got relegated. If you're in different competitions, you would have like the Carabao Cup patch, the FA Cup patch, even the Gold Premier League patch if you won it, even the Bundesliga and stuff. Uh, it did change for a few competitions, and also the numbers on the back of the jerseys. Yeah, that was another little detail. These are little things, but it does make a difference. And also, there was budget increases based on last season. So if you saved a lot of money in the previous season, um, they would give you a bit more back for the next season. So the France 2019 Women's World Cup was a DLC added into FIFA 19. We will be getting another one for FIFA 23. We're going to have two World Cup DLCs that year because it's going to be the men's one and the women's one as well. So you can look forward to that. Now, of course, the journey was in FIFA 19 as well. This was season three, the last season. And I think there was a Champions League final or something. And I remember maybe the Women's World Cup was a part of it as well. 
And uh, this game also featured that 1960s football match that we took a look at probably two months ago now or something. And uh, you could play like this vintage game. It looked very, very nice, very cool. And uh, that's a bit of what it looks like right there on your screen. So yeah, it just sort of completed the trilogy. Let me know if you played the journey. Some people liked it, some people hated it. But overall, it was a nice experience, something a little bit different. And there was some cool things that they still need to bring over to normal player career mode as well. All right, so we're going to play a game now. We're going to play in the Champions League because they had the license. And we're going to use Juventus because that license has now disappeared. And we're probably going to verse maybe PSG. Now, we're also going to play at the Juventus Stadium on Legendary Difficulty. We have to play at the Juve Stadium because, you know, that's not in the game anymore as well. What we might do is play Ronaldo up front and also bring in uh, Douglas Costa on the left. And uh, we've got Benucci Chiellini, 90 overall Chiellini as well. I think we'll keep it like that. Have a bit of fun. Let's see how we go. So there we go, the Allianz Arena or the Allianz Stadium. I don't know which one it is, but we'll call it the Juventus Stadium. And that's what it says there on the thing as well. So it looks beautiful. Of course, it's been missing for a couple of years, but I do miss it. Remember the blue Champions League ball? It's all coming back to my mind now, all the memories. Still got that dodgy trainer. How many times does that trainer come up? All the time. No matter how many times you get rid of it, it just keeps coming back for more. I don't understand. But anyway, um, the graphics actually look very nice in the Juve Stadium. The grass looks a beautiful green. And uh, you've also got banners and stuff. I miss this stadium, man. I haven't played in this stadium in so long. Alexandro, let's go for Ronaldo here. I reckon he can win that header. Ronaldo, this guy can do anything in a game. He's literally like superhuman. So let me know if you played FIFA 19. If you still play FIFA 19, um, let me know if you hated it or liked it. Any memories of FIFA 19? Let me know in the comments, man. I always love talking about older FIFA games. And that was a big strike there by Mbappe. I mean, I thought it was hitting the back of the net. I'm very surprised. Benucci. Plays it up to Chen. We've got Douglas Costa calling for it. He's going to get there. Chips it into Ronaldo. Oh, my goodness. Ronaldo got a little bit too excited there. We've got Mbappe on the ball. This guy can do anything. Got to watch him. Neymar. Benucci cuts it out. We've been playing very well, and it's opened up again for Douglas Costa, who's been completely dangerous here, but they're sort of keeping up with him. And uh, that final pass has been very dodgy, man. When you play these older games, it's crazy to see some of the lineups because it brings back the memories. And um, how certain players have left, how certain teams have changed over the couple of years. You know, some players do stay, but there's a lot that actually leave as well. So you don't realize until you come back all the changes a team has over just like three or four years. Oh, that's a bad challenge. That's a bad challenge. He took out two players. Friendly fire as well. Benucci, I'm surprised he's not sent off there. I mean, you know a tackle's bad when he gets none of the ball and he takes out his teammate as well. Let's see what we can do here. Got to defend, got to wake up. Mbappe with the strike hits the post. Wow. This guy's just shooting from anywhere, and it's so dangerous. Let's play it up, lay it off. Quick passes. Doing very well here. Douglas Costa makes the run. A couple quick passes always gets you in behind. This could be the chance. Douglas Costa has a hit, and he scores. Hits the post, and it goes into the back of the net, and there we go. Neymar on the ball. We cut it out again with Dybala. Dybala playing like Prime Maldini. Pjanic over the top. He's going to find Joao Cancelo, and he's going to go across goal here to Douglas Costa, who got a little bit too excited, and the excitement was worth it because he's just scored an absolute banger. What a pass from Cancelo, and he hit it first time. I was not expecting that to go in, but what a strike. Wow. And we cut it out again. Our defense has been on point today, and we just need Costa to start running because he could be on a hat-trick here. Douglas Costa for on goal. What's he going to do this time? Douglas Costa slots at home for the hat-trick. What a performance by Costa. And Paredes on the edge of the box. He's going to have to hit it. No, he doesn't. He plays it to Cavani, who hits it first time. And it's one back for PSG. So a couple more minutes here. Not much to go. But overall, um, FIFA 19, I, I think it's not as bad as what we made it out to be. I don't know. The gameplay felt all right. It felt fun today. Maybe because I'm using, like, good players and stuff. But maybe we're always a little bit too harsh when the game's like the current game. And then over the years, the game's actually not that bad. I don't know. It could be just me. But one game's not going to tell you the full picture. I need to come back and keep playing it. I don't know, man. It's weird how you just come back and you forget all the things that you said bad about the game at the time. But, yeah, career mode obviously didn't have too many, like, game-changing features. But the gameplay was all right. Like, it was pretty fun. I think we'll leave it there. So if you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like for me. And make sure you subscribe for more FIFA history. I'll see you next time.